Hello, YouTube family. How's everybody doing? Hope everybody's doing well. I'm in the living room today. Um, I'm sorry, the light behind me is a little bright. Can't do nothing about it. Coming through the window. I'm going to read to you another devotional today. Um, I'm going to read from the Bible, Acts 4, 1 through 20. <clears throat> the priests and the captain of the temple guard and the Sadducees came up to Peter and John while they were speaking to, to the people. They were greatly disturbed because the apostles were teaching the people and proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. They seized Peter and John, and because it was evening, they put them in jail until the next day. But many who heard the message believed, and the number of men grew to about 5,000. The next day, the rulers, elders, and teachers of the law met in Jerusalem. Ananias, the high priest, was there, and so were Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and the other men of the high priest's family. They had Peter and John brought before them and began to question them. By what power or what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers and elders of the people, if we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a cripple and are asked how he was healed, then know this, you and all the people of Israel. It is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. He is the stone you builders rejected, which, was, which has become the capstone. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. When they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished and they took note that these men had been with Jesus. But since they couldn't, could see the man who had been healed standing there with them, there was nothing they could say. So they ordered them to withdraw from the Sanhedrin and then come conferred together. What are we going to do with these men? They asked. Everybody living in Jerusalem knows they have done an outstanding miracle, and we cannot deny it. But to stop this thing from spreading any further among the people, we must warn these men to speak no longer to anyone in this name. Then they called them in again and commanded them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John replied, Judge for yourselves whether it is right in God's sight to obey rather you rather than God. For we cannot help speaking about what we have, be have seen and heard. Mm.
Okay. Now the devotional. It is entitled, Follow Our Conviction. Most of us have been blessed to live relatively free from persecution. We may have experienced some mocking, ridicule, or ostracism because of our beliefs, but we don't have to fear punishment or death. However, that's not the case elsewhere in the world. There are Christians in other countries for whom today's passage is all too familiar. Act 4 tells us that Peter and John faced great opposition for their faith. After being thrown into jail for healing a sick man, they were warned not to speak or teach in Jesus Christ's name, but they held firmly to their convictions and replied, do you, do you think God wants us to obey you rather than him? We cannot stop telling about everything we have seen and heard. Our goal as believers is to be become unshakable in our faith. Peter and John didn't flinch from their responsibility to proclaim salvation in Jesus' name, even in the face of imprisonment and threats. Yet in reading this account, we may wonder how we could ever endure persecution. The truth is that in ourselves, we can't do it, but we are never alone. When we stand for our convictions, God's spirit is always present in us. He gives us the physical, spiritual, mental, and moral strength to stand firm when we are tested and tried. God wants his children to trust him with the future. He doesn't want us becoming panicky about what may lie ahead. But if he ever calls us to suffer for him, in that moment, he'll provide the grace we need in order to remain faithful. Amen. And something else you can read is Esther 1 through 5. Okay, that's it for the reading. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like, share, and subscribe. And until I see you again, God bless you all. Have a good day.